Hello, ladies. Welcome to Eating in Sync with Your Cycle for Hormone Health and Weight Loss. I am super excited about this little webinar for you because honestly, for myself, learning about my cycle and how to eat to optimize my cycle and where I am throughout that month, it was a game changer for me. And women, don't know how their hormones shift and change throughout a 28 day cycle and how they can maximize their weight loss results by eating in sync with this 28 day cycle. Now, for many of you, you may have a 30 day cycle, a 35 day cycle, but for this webinar, we are going to just go with the 28 day cycle because it is the most common and you can still apply this if you have a 30 day, 32 day cycle, whatever it is, you can still apply these concepts to any length of cycle. Now, if you are a menopausal woman, you can actually go along with the moon cycle with what I'm talking about. So the moon also has, as you know, a 28 day cycle. So you can actually go along with the new moon all the way up to the full moon with applying these tools and ways of eating. Uh, because even in menopause, you'll still find that you have a cycle. I was just talking to a woman the other day who said, you know, I'm in, I've been menopausal for years, but I can still tell when my period would have come. She said, I get a headache. I get a little bit moody. And that there's still truth to that. You know, even in menopause, when you're not actually bleeding, you'll still have a little baby cycle that happens throughout a month. So either whether or not you're fertile and you are cycling or you are in perimenopause or menopause, you can still apply these concepts. So we are going to go through just a little short course in how the hormones work, which you may already know, but it's very important to understand um, and just give your brain a refresher if you have heard these things before, because you, the more we know about what our cycle is doing, the more then we'll understand how we can eat to optimize that cycle and to help us to lose weight. So we'll go through that. And then I'm going to tell you how best to eat to optimize hormones. Um, but not only that, but how can we lose weight most effectively by trying to eat certain ways throughout our cycle. And you'll be so interested to hear how that changes, how in the first half of the month, you'll do certain things that will help you to lose weight, but then that will totally change in the second half of the month for you to lose weight. So let's get started. All right. So eating in sync with your cycle for hormone health and weight loss. Who am I? <laughs> Just in case you don't know, I'm Karen Martell. I am, I am a certified hormone specialist and transformational nutrition coach. I've been in this hormone industry now for 10 plus years, and I am here to teach you all about eating for your cycle. All right. All right. So as I said before, we're going to go with the 28 day cycle, but you can apply that to a moon cycle, or you can even apply that to a 30 or 32 day cycle, whatever it is that your body's doing right now. So many women actually don't know about their cycles and don't fully comprehend how their body changes hormonally throughout the month. They understand that they have a period once a month, but that is the extent of their knowledge. It is so important to know what each day of your cycle means, what your bodies do throughout each part of the cycle, and to know how to eat to optimize weight loss results and keep your hormones in balance. So I call these the three amigos of your cycle, because these are the three hormones that are most prominent throughout a 28 day cycle that will affect your, your body's ability to lose weight uh, and what's happening throughout that cycle. So first up, probably the most important hormone of all hormones in my eyes is estradiol. Now, estradiol is a type 
of estrogen. We actually have three types of estrogen, and that is estrone, estradiol, and estriol. So for today, we're going with estradiol, which is the strongest of those three hormones, of those three estrogens, and the one that affects the weight as well as where we are in our cycle, how we should be eating, et cetera. So estrogen is responsible for growing and maturing the uterine lining. That lining sheds during menstruation. And also estrogen matures the egg prior to ovulation. Estrogen is produced mostly by the ovaries, but also in smaller amounts by the adrenal glands and in fat tissue. It is most abundant in the first half of the menstrual cycle, which is known as the follicular phase. And we're going to get to why that's so important to know. <laughs> Second up of our three amigos is progesterone. Oh, I love progesterone. I just used a little progesterone this morning, actually. Progesterone works in the body to balance the effects of estrogen. It is produced after ovulation by what is called the corpus luteum. That is a sac that the egg comes from and dominates the second half of the cycle. That's progesterone, which is known as the luteal phase. Progesterone's main job is to control the buildup of that uterine lining and help mature and maintain the uterine lining if there is a pregnancy. If there is no pregnancy, our progesterone levels fall and the lining of the uterus is shed beginning the menstrual cycle. So we got estradiol, being dominant in the first half, progesterone in the second half of the cycle. Now, there's another hormone that we tend to forget about, which is testosterone. Women produce testosterone, which some women don't know that. Uh, we don't produce, of course, as much as men do, but it is still very important, our testosterone. An important sex hormone for both men and women, although women have much lower levels, it is produced by the ovaries and the adrenal glands, which are right on top of the kidneys and has a surge at the time of ovulation and a slight rise just before menses. And, and women know this, and this is all for purpose, right? Testosterone is very linked to our sex drive. So you see, we get this little bump of testosterone right before we ovulate, why? To, to drive us to go have sex and procreate. And then we get it again before a little bit before the menses. So testosterone helps women maintain muscle mass and bone strength, enhances sex drive, and helps with overall sense of well-being and zest for life. All right, so there are four menstrual phases, but we're going, we're, I'm going to go through all four, but the main, there's mainly two that we're going to be talking about today. So the phase one of the menstrual phase, this is when you bleed and get your period. This starts at the first day of your period cycle. And for most women, this lasts anywhere between three to seven days. So day one of this 28 day cycle is the first day of your period. Your endometrial lining sheds exits your body through your vagina, which we all know, I think by now, <laughs> during this phase, which is called the follicular phase, progesterone and estradiol are at their lowest levels. Towards the end of the week, estradiol starts to rise. Phase two is the follicular phase. Now, now that you've had your period, your cycle enters the pre-ovulatory phase and you no longer have an endometrial lining. So your body prepares a new one all over again. Your endometrial lining starts to thicken and an ovum in your ovary starts to mature as it gets ready to be released. Progesterone slowly begins to rise. Estrogen surges around day 12 to 13, meaning that it shoots up quadrupling levels, but then falls almost all the way back down to pre-surge levels. Phase three is our ovulation phase, which really isn't very long. It's about a couple days. <laughs> about two weeks before your period, your ovaries release this now mature ovum and you ovulate. And we all know this is the time if you're trying to get pregnant, this would be when to do it. Uh, it happens, like I said, 24 to 36 hours after estrogen surges, ovulation occurs. The dominant follicle releases an egg and becomes what is called the corpus luteum. In a 28-day cycle, 
this is around day 14. So ovulation, it's really, yeah, 24 to 36 hours. It also 24 to 36 hours after the surge of estrogen. One other hormone that's key in your week too is that testosterone, which rises during the latter part of the week around ovulation to once again, drive you to go and have sex. All right, phase four is our luteal phase. Your menstrual cycle then enters this luteal phase where your endometrial lining continues to thicken. On day 21, both estrogen and progesterone peak. Progesterone, however, dominates the luteal phase. When you don't become pregnant, your uterus sheds the lining, marking the start of your period and the cycle starts all over again at the menstrual phase. So as you can see, your hormones change dramatically over the course of your cycle. The different ratios of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone throughout the month require different nutritional and detoxification needs. Changing up what we eat on a week-to-week -week basis is imperative to support our cyclical body in order to balance our hormones and successfully lose weight. Hormones dictate what your body does with food, and the impact is stronger than calories alone. Many women are obsessed with calories, but they are only a part of the equation when it comes to nutrition and weight loss. Approximately 99% of weight gain is hormonal. Resetting your hormones is often the missing ingredient for successful weight loss. So what to eat during the menstrual phase. Most women notice during their menstrual cycle that their hunger levels are low. Cravings feel diminished, especially compared to the week prior to their period. During this phase when progesterone is low and estrogen is on the rise, it can be easy and beneficial to take advantage of those low hunger levels and do some intermittent fasting or low carb meal plans. Be sure to incorporate red meat if you're not a vegan. Red meat is the best source of iron, which can become depleted during your periods. Eating anti-inflammatory foods can be helpful to combat period cramps. Things like turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, cayenne, cardamom, cumin, garlic, parsley, and curry. This next phase is the follicular phase. Now hormones, estrogen, and testosterone are peaking between days seven and 14. The right amount of estrogen, not too much, not too little, helps you to be insulin sensitive. Now insulin is a hormone created by your pancreas and it helps regulate blood sugar in your body. If you're overweight or even skinny fat, storing too much visceral fat around your organs, your body's glucose regulator, insulin gets thrown off balance. And if you have a, and you have a harder time losing weight. In addition, if you tend to eat sugary foods throughout the day, you keep your insulin working overtime, trying to clear the sugar from your blood. What does insulin do with that extra sugar you ask? Hmm, it stores it as fat. Estrogen itself has many beneficial effects on the body, including helping optimize the action of insulin, the hormone that prevents high blood sugar levels. Consequently, low estrogen levels may lead to insulin resistance or impaired insulin action. Low estrogen levels is the reason for the menopausal waking that we see all too often. You can utilize this estrogen-induced insulin sensitivity to assist you in weight loss during this first half of your cycle. Estrogen gives you energy to work out more as well and can help with managing hunger levels and cravings. It's a beautiful thing. And I know that you guys, if you think about it, you know this already. What happens after you get your period? You know, you get the couple days of your menstruation, you're, you're feeling crampy, your energy's low. But then as it starts to go along that week, and maybe by the fourth or fifth day, you suddenly get this increase in energy and you feel start to feel really good about yourself. And you get, you actually start to feel sexier. You feel 
like more like having sex, your actual sex drive goes up a little bit. You feel more social. You want to get out there. You want to talk to your friends, maybe go to a dinner party, whatever it might be. You feel like working out a lot more in that first half of the cycle and eating just seems to be easier. Now, if, if you don't feel like any of that, that's okay. That's why you're here. I'm going to teach you how to start tuning into this so that you understand, okay, so this is what's happening. I'm in my first half of my cycle. This would be the time that, you know, maybe I can fast a little bit more and start to get more in tune with my hunger levels during this time. This is the time to do more fasting, whether you do intermittent fasting or even a few days of fasting. If you are a well seasoned, if you are in, or if you are well seasoned in the world of fasting, I don't recommend jumping into a three day water fast if you haven't done fasting before. You, it's a it's a muscle that you have to get stronger. So you start off with some intermittent fasting and then you move up, but always work with a health professional on that one. But if you're, if you, if you're new to intermittent fasting, you know, doing it during this time of the month, you'll find that it's just easier than the second half of the month. And it's also easier on the hormonal system and your body will have an easier time not eating because it's more insulin sensitive because of that estrogen. So this is the time where you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to intermittent fast, you know, maybe five days a week till noon, maybe till two o'clock in the afternoon on some days, but take advantage in that first half of your cycle and do some fasting because what that does, it does lower the caloric intake. Your body will start to burn up those fat stores and it'll be easier because you're more estrogen dominant in this first half of the cycle. It can be a great time to start a healthy eating protocol or diet and utilize the weight loss benefits of calorie restriction. So if you're thinking, you know, I want to do a cleanse or a detox, or I want to try keto, or I want to try paleo or whatever, you know, you shift, you've decided you're going to shift the way that you're eating at the beginning of your cycle is the best time to start a new healthy eating regime because it'll be easier for you to stick to starting in the second half of your cycle when your cravings are up makes it challenging to stick with it. So it's better to start in the first half of your cycle. It can also be beneficial at this time to follow a lower carb diet compared to the second half of your cycle. Because of what's happening to us hormonally, it's easier for us to go lower carb, but not only that, it's safer for our hormones to go lower carb in the first half of the month than it is the second half. The second half, as you're going to learn, we need carbohydrates for a very important neurotransmitter called serotonin, which is helps us to be just happier people. So first half of the cycle, this is when you go lower carb. This is when you implement more fasting. Okay. Now the ovulatory phase, during the ovulation phase, there are certain foods that you can eat to help enhance fertility if that's what you're interested in. Um, if not, you can continue following the guidelines for the follicular phase. Foods to help with fertility during this time, avocados, they are very high in vitamin E, magnesium folate, and other B vitamins and healthy fats. A very credible study has shown that while undergoing IVF treatment, women who ate an avocado a day during ovulation increased their chances of conception. Figs, figs have been re revered for centuries as an aphrodisiac and are high in plant-based zinc. They also contain magnesium, manganese, calcium, copper, potassium, folate, and vitamin K and A. And then here's a different one, edible flowers are the sex organs of plants, which means they have plant hormones that support you during your blossoming time of ovulation. Use delicate pansies or bright, spicy, nasturi, I'm not gonna say that right, nasturiums <laughs> to garnish your salads. Eat orchid blossoms with raw organic chocolate and be sure to appreciate the beauty of the blooms. 
All right, so now we're in the luteal phase. After ovulation, the ruptured follicle restructures into a gland called the corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone during the luteal phase. I think of progesterone like our natural value. If progesterone is too low during this phase, you may experience PMS, premenstrual spotting, heavy periods, cramps, anxiety, and poor sleep. None of those things are any fun. So supporting progesterone production with your diet and lifestyle is going to be key for this luteal phase. Because we know if we're not feeling good and we're grouchy and moody and full of PMS, do we want to eat the salad? I don't think so. I think we want to eat the chocolate cake. I know I do. <laughs> so this is the time that women notoriously struggle with cravings for unhealthy foods, namely carbs, sugar, and fatty foods like cheese, french fries, and so on. Our bodies naturally begin to crave more carbohydrates in the second half of their cycle for a few different reasons. One, your metabolic rate is elevated during the second half of your cycle. So it is natural to feel hungrier. This is why it's easier to fast in the first half of the cycle, in the follicular phase. The neurotransmitter serotonin, an important mood regulator, drops, which causes the body to crave carbohydrates. So this is so I think this is a game changer. I just, just to understand what our body is doing in that second half of the, the cycle, because a lot of the time we'll beat ourselves up because we can't control our cravings because we might have low progesterone or we might not, we might be experiencing more PMS than the average person. Either way, it's affecting our serotonin. So the body is so smart that it turns up the cravings for those foods, those sugary foods, so that you go out and you feed that need because in actual fact, your body needs that serotonin. So estrogen, it is a very important serotonin agonist necessary for serotonin production. So agonist means it's just, it's I kind of think of it as it aggravates, but I don't want to think of it like that. It stimulates, that's the right word. It stimulates the serotonin. There are estrogen receptors in various organs throughout the body, including the brain. In the first two weeks of a woman's cycle, estrogen levels we know are higher. So in most women, serotonin levels are also higher. Elevated serotonin helps to improve mood. In this role, estrogen acts as a natural antidepressant and mood stabilizer. If the body's production and store of ser and stores of serotonin is otherwise adequate. In the second half of the cycle, after ovulation, estrogen naturally drops. If you are a woman who is prone to low levels of serotonin, the estrogen drop that occurs premenstrual may be all it takes to lower your serotonin level below the point of optimum functioning. This results in an increase in carbohydrate cravings. Doesn't that just like, oh, that makes sense now. <laughs> Foods high in simple carbohydrates, such as pasta, potatoes, bread, pastries, and popcorn, typically increase insulin levels and allow more tryptophan, the natural amino acid building block for serotonin to enter the brain, where the brain cells can convert it to serotonin. The calming, of serotonin, calming effect of serotonin can often be felt within 30 minutes of eating these foods. This may be one of the reasons simple carbohydrates are so addictive. They can be used to make you feel happy, but can also cause high blood sugar levels that can, can contribute, of course, to weight gain over time. Instead, I recommend incorporating complex carbohydrates such as sweet potatoes, apples, blueberries, carrots, garbanzo beans as a healthier way to boost serotonin during the luteal phase. And if you, so if you're trying, like you're, let's say you're going into that second phase of your cycle and you start getting these cravings and you're trying so hard to fight these cravings because you're wanting to lose weight. And then 
what do we know usually happens, you know, usually late at night when we're tired and our win willpower's in the toilet, we start to reach for the chocolate or the ice cream or the cookies in the cupboard. And we feel like we just don't have any control over ourselves when if we knew that we were in our luteal phase and right off the bat, before those cravings got the best of us, if we started to incorporate these really healthy carbohydrates, then the body won't crave the bad ones as much, if at all. So brain serotonin levels can also be released by eating foods rich in tryptophan, such as chicken, eggs, cheese, turkey, beef, salmon, tuna, tempeh, beans, lentils, spinach, and other dark leafy greens, pumpkin and chia seeds and nuts. So if you fill your plate up with all of these good foods, making sure that you're adding in some of these great complex carbohydrates, like a sweet potato, maybe an apple, some blueberries, then you're going to be steadying yourself up for success. Progesterone also plays a key role in the luteal phase of your cycle. And like estrogen, it affects neurotransmitters. Progesterone is a GABA agonist. So it helps support the production of GABA. So well-balanced GABA is important for stress management and in maintaining a balanced mood. The rise and fall of progesterone in the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle will influence GABA levels, although not quite to the extent of estrogen's influence on serotonin. So foods that help support progesterone production. Once again, the avocado. Avocados contain magnesium, which is one of the best minerals to regulate progesterone by supporting the functions of the corpus luteum, a structure that is created after ovulation. It also helps the body handle elevated cortisol levels, which are released under stress instead of progesterone. Other magnesium rich food sources include soy, dark leafy vegetables, legumes, and dried apricots. And when I say soy, I do not mean soy milk or soy cheese or soy fake meat. I mean like real fermented tofu or tempeh, all right? Now, kiwis are another one. Kiwis and other citrusy fruits are excellent sources of vitamin C, which also makes them adequate progesterone boosting foods. The antioxidant vitamin consumption has been associated with higher progesterone concentrations and promoting a healthier balance between estrogen and progesterone. Additional vitamin C rich natural foods to increase progesterone are pineapple, papaya, bell peppers, or oranges. Another one, walnuts. Walnuts are a good example of progesterone enha enhancing foods due to their content of vitamin B6. The vitamin has been found to modulate the activity of steroid hormones, including progesterone, which is key for maintaining overall hormonal balance in the body. Consider add adding other vitamin B6 rich foods to your diet, such as eggs, fish, beef, chickpeas, carrots, and milk only if you can tolerate dairy. All right, luteal phase weight loss. You think, how can we lose weight when our cravings are going up, Karen? <laughs> so progesterone naturally increases our internal temperature and boosts our metabolism during the luteal phase. If our temps don't rise very high, we can assume low progesterone may be an issue. We can take advantage of this temperature increase to help counterbalance an increase in our hunger and cravings for carbohydrates. However, you could also opt to use this time to actively try to lose weight by eating healthy and staying active. Just be sure to not overly do the fasting and eat too low carb as you may find that you will fail at your attempts. So you can, all those wonderful foods that I talked about earlier, if you can focus on those and still be getting out there and doing a little bit of exercise and eating those healthy meals without fasting, because of that met metabolic boost that's happening thanks to your progesterone, your body can still lose weight in the second half of your cycle. It's just tougher because you're fighting with cravings possibly for things other than fruit <laughs> in the second half of your cycle. So when it comes to what foods are best for 
our hormones throughout our entire cycle. I always lean towards what I call primal based diets. Now, primal based diets are many different types of diets, which can, can include ketogenic diets, a paleo based diet autoimmune paleo, as well, even incorporating fasting into any one of those that can also be carnivore. So those to me are the primal base diets. Now, while there is no specific diet that addresses every single hormone, there are some general eating guidelines for hormone balance. So foods to eat in the primal spectrum. Of course, lots and lots of vegetables, any and all kinds. They help the liver and other detox organs break down old hormones and also aid in reducing the body's toxic load. Vegetables are also loaded with fiber and nutrients that help promote digestion and cellular health. So the fiber is so key for our hormone function. And you're going to see later on when you look at the food plan that I've provided for you, you're going to see a lot of high fiber foods in there. Vegetables, we've got things like flaxseed in there, which is so great to help detox um, harmful estrogens out of the body and help promote good estrogens. So you want to eat lots of vegetables, lots of fiber containing foods, okay? Also quality source proteins. While it isn't so much the ratio of protein to other nutrients that is important, it's the principle of blood sugar balance. Hormones are very sensitive and respond to other body imbalances and blood sugar is a great place to start. A lot of the time, blood sugar problems are the root cause of hormone imbalance. So the more we can keep our blood sugar stable, which is why I promote the primal based diets because they are, they tend to be lower in processed carbohydrates and they keep the blood sugar stable. I know for myself, before I found paleo, this was, oh, many, many years ago now, over 10 years ago now, I was the person, even though I ate so well, I had to carry a snack with me at all times, because if I didn't within two hours, sometimes an hour, my blood sugar would crash and I'd be shaky and hangry. And I'd have to have that snack in my purse. And I would panic if I knew I had to go somewhere and I wouldn't be able to eat for a couple of hours. I panicked because my blood sugar was so unstable, even though I ate well. When I switched to paleo, that completely changed. My blood sugar is always stable now. Now I can go six, seven hours without eating and I get no blood sugar crash because when you're eating, let's say you wake up in the morning, you eat the all so familiar oatmeal. Well, your body doesn't say, Hey, this is, this is oatmeal. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to just make this, you know, this is going to help this person to lose weight. I'm going to convert it into protein or some other thing that's not going to make us gain weight. That's not sugar. It doesn't do that. Your body doesn't say, oh, this is oatmeal. It's not straight up sugar or a donut. It's still packed full of carbohydrates and carbohydrates convert to glucose, sugar in your body. So you wake up in the morning, you think you're doing this big favor for yourself because you're having a great big bowl of oatmeal with some skim milk on it and some berries and maybe even a little brown sugar or honey mixed into it. Well, what's that going to do right off the bat to your blood sugar? It's going to just poof, it's going to skyrocket. And then an hour later, if tops, it's going to crash back down and then you're going to get the hangry feeling and you're going to need to get yourself some more carbohydrates as quickly as possible to bring that blood sugar back up. This is the blood sugar roller coaster that I was on for years. And so you're so much better if you don't eat those higher carb foods, even if they're so-called healthy ones because we want to stabilize blood sugar because it has such an impact on our hormones. Now, if you don't have hormone dysfunction, which I don't think you'd be here if you didn't, but then you might, your body can maybe handle that. But if you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to balance your hormones, you really want to start your morning out 
not with a blood sugar spike because then you don't have to ride the blood sugar roller coaster for the rest of the day. So waking up to some healthy, you know, farm fresh eggs and some spinach or some tomatoes on there. People will put salsa on some scrambled eggs, some turkey sausage patties, anything like that, that isn't going to spike blood sugar is the best way to start your morning off. Okay. Now, quality paleo fats are also so key. These promote proper hormone production in males and females. Fats actually make good, good fats make good cholesterol and good cholesterol makes our hormones. It is the primary building block for all of our hormones. So we need good fats. I always say my, I grew up in the no fat era. My mom was like, you do, she called butter Vaseline. <laughs> she, it was like the devil in our house. We were not allowed to go near it, but that was what was the trend back then was no fat, right? I swear that no fat era just destroyed so many women's hormones because we weren't eating our building blocks for our hormones. So foods to avoid processed foods. We all know that they all contribute to a toxic load to the body, vegetable oils, trans fats, which contribute to excess adipose tissue, which can of course perpetuate hormone imbalances, good, bad fats, don't make our hormones. Grains and legumes, which are rich in phytates and lectins are also known as anti-nutrients that are harder to digest and which can bind with minerals, ushering them out of the body. So, and they're high in carbohydrates and they can be very inflammatory. And when there's a lot of hormonal imbalance going on, almost always there's going to be a factor of leaky gut, digestive problems, as well as inflammation in the body. And so we need to remove these inflammatory foods, which unfortunately do tend to be the grains and the legumes. More so grains, I find that some, most people can handle a little bit of legumes here and there in their diet, like garbanzo beans, and, and they do tend to be high in fiber, which is also good. Um, but when you're getting started out on this journey of trying to balance hormones and lose weight, I always say, bring the grains and legumes out for a period of time, you know, a month, two months, kind of let your body have a, you know, a push of the reset button, I say, and then put them back in a little bit and see how your body responds. Okay. Some people, like I said, some people can absolutely handle them. Other people can't. I know I can't. <laughs> uh, dairy products. So this is a very kind of controversial. Should we eat dairy? Should we not? Honestly, some people, no problem with dairy. Other people, it can be very inflammatory. I would say more people react to dairy than don't react to dairy. This can be a genetic thing. It could be the state of your gut, the state of inflammation in your body. I always say, if you are going to eat it, try to eat the more, you know, things like yogurt, fermented dairy, maybe a little bit of cheese, harder cheese, the better. But to start with, ladies, just remove the dairy for a month and then you can put it back in and see, once again, how did your body respond? You really don't know because your body has built up a tolerance to a lot of this stuff. You need to remove it for a minimum of three weeks in order to know how much does it really affect the body? Um, sugar in all forms, of course, they contribute to blood sugar issues like insulin resistance and type two diabetes, which can cause a cascade of hormonal imbalances. Now seed cycling, I, you've probably heard about seed cycling. Maybe you've tried it. It really works. So seed cycling for hormone support. Now seed cycling, the premise of seed cycling is that you use certain seeds flax, sesame, pumpkin, and sunflower on a scheduled rotation that allows, that follows the lunar cycle to regulate your hormones. Many hormonal problems stem from an imbalance in the body between progesterone and estrogen, and the seeds contain beneficial nutrients that help balance out progesterone and estrogen. During the follicular phase, the phytoestrogens in flax seeds can help increase or decrease estrogen levels as needed. Phytoestrogens are compounds in plants that can mimic the action of estrogen. 
Additionally, zinc from pumpkin seeds is claimed to promote progesterone production in preparation for the next phase of the cycle. During the luteal phase, lignans, a type of polyphenol in sesame, are supposed to inhibit estrogen levels from increasing too much. Meanwhile, the vitamin E in sunflower seeds is thought to help boost progesterone levels. And I've had so many clients use this very successfully um, to help regulate their period or their hormones throughout their 28-day cycle. So here's how you do it. For the first, and you don't have to remember this, I'm actually gonna give you a handout so you know how to do it. And I've also incorporated this into your meal plan. So for the first two weeks of your cycle, day one to 14, consume foods high in alpha linoleic acid. Consume one tablespoon ground flax and ground pumpkin seeds daily. For the second two weeks of your cycle, days 14 to 28, consume foods high in linoleic acid. Consume one tablespoon ground sunflower and ground sesame daily. They don't have to be ground. You'll see in the meal plan, they're not always ground. Um, just make sure you chew them really well because you're just trying to get all the goodness out of them, right? So you really want to take your time chewing your food. The seeds must be freshly ground, and I found a coffee grinder to be the best. Otherwise, they may pass through your digestive tract whole, and you won't get any of the benefits. So ground or very well-chewed ladies, so they don't just pass through your digestive system. All right, summing it all up, follicular phase. What is that, ladies? <laughs> the first half of your cycle. This is where you are estrogen dominant, insulin sensitive. It's the time to incorporate intermittent fasting, incorporate a low carb diet, eat a tablespoon daily of each flax and pumpkin seeds, and eat a primal based diet. Luteal phase, you are progesterone dominant. Your carb cravings go up. Metabolism increases. This is the time to incorporate right from the get-go healthy amounts of carbs. Eat a tablespoon of sunflower and sesame seeds daily. Eat a primal based diet. So the meal plan. I have included a four week meal plan and a PDF handout with some of the stuff that we've talked about to help you to incorporate everything that was discussed in this course. Feel free to mix and match recipes, repeat or add your own by following the guidelines that I've talked about here today. You can find me, if you wanna know more, you can find me at karenmartel.com. I've got an excellent quiz if you haven't taken it already. It's the hormone quiz. This helps you to determine which hormones could be out of balance and contributing to your ability to lose weight. I should say, stopping you from being able to lose weight. So you can start there. You can also find me at my podcast, The Other Side of weight loss. All right. So that is it, ladies. Um, and you'll be able, I'm sure down below in the email, you will have gotten a link to download your little PDF guide as well as your four week meal plan. So thanks so much for joining me here today. And don't hesitate to reach out if you've got some questions at karen at karenmartel.com. Have a great day.